don't fall, don't fall. Okay, yeah. Oh. Mm, this is gonna be fun. Hello, hello, and welcome to the Looking Glass World. My name is Aradna Matthews, and today we are looking at a big ass stack of books that I have right here. Ew, this one don't fall, don't fall. Okay, yeah, this stack of books um, that are all recommendations that I found on Bookstagram. For those of you who don't know what Bookstagram is, it's basically the book world of Instagram of which your girl is an active member, so please follow me on Instagram. But I occasionally see these books popping up, but today we're gonna look at them and see whether they're actually worth the hype or garbage. I'm just kidding. We're gonna start off with this bad boy right here. The name is Mexican Gothic by Silvia Moreno Garcia. On the back, it doesn't say much. There's literally three lines that say, he's trying to poison me. You must come for me, Noemi. You have to save me. And I was like, oh, mm, this is gonna be fun. When glamour socialite Noemi, something I'm scared to pronounce the last name, receives a frantic letter from her newlywed cousin begging to be rescued from a mysterious doom, it's clear something is desperately amiss. Catalina has always had a flair for the dramatic, but her claims that her husband is poisoning her and her visions of restless ghosts sound remarkable, even for her. This has all the classic elements of a gothic story. A derelict manor, a huge house in a crumbling sort of state of ruin. A family within that house that seems to be in an equally crumbling state of ruin. And then you have an unwitting protagonist, a woman typically, and through marriage typically, will enter this house and she will find out that all is not right and that's how the plot starts to unwind. Also a really strong element of the supernatural, um, but what I like about gothic literature is that the ghosts in gothic literature are not the villains most of the time. Most of the time they're very important because they actually help the protagonist figure out what is going on and unveil the whole mystery that surrounds the house and the history of its inhabitants. This had all of those classic elements. It was really exciting. It gets dark. There are a few jump scares. There is also some very strong sexual moments, but um, dark, not romantic. So overall, I mean, it creates your classic gothic environment. There's intrigue, it's spooky, it's dark. I loved it. Definitely worth the hype. Okay, so up next we have The Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern. So basically the premise is that you have a circus that comes at night. This circus is known because it's stranger than other circuses. Obviously there's a magic element there. But as you read the story, you figure out that the circus is more like an arena. And the protagonists are the ones who are behind everything that you see in the circus. Now, who are these protagonists? They are two people who are chosen um, way before they even know what's going on. So at a very young age, two people are chosen to be adversaries in a duel that happens in the night circus. And the conditions of this duel are that they keep um, showcasing the magic that they have through the circus till the end. What that end is, is kept vague throughout the book. Is it death? Is it total destruction of will? I have no idea. I personally wish it could have gone darker. They set this entire duel up as if it's a fight to the death. You're both bound to this, whether you like it or not, you're gonna fight it out in the night circus. And then what happens? You have like tents that are like floating in the clouds and gardens of ice and it's all very pretty but it's all also quite tame. It's something that a younger reader might find spooky. I find things spooky very easily. It's not like I have a huge appetite for horror but even I found this to be not that exciting considering all the hype around it. So as a standalone book, fairly entertaining read, not bad but worth all the bookstagram hype for me, it's a bad. Okay, so what's next in our list? I think we have this beauty right here, the Palace of Illusions. I just wish that this horrible sticker was not there, but hmm. It's basically a retelling of the Mahabharat, but more focused on Draupadi's perspective. In this book, I'm not gonna lie, brought me to tears because 
just feeling what the characters felt, the frustration of having your whole life prophesized and not being able to do sometimes what you really want to do because you have to follow the path that has been set down for you, the pain of this whole war, the Mahabharat, and the kind of death it involved, especially when characters had to kill people that they loved, people that they knew very well, just how what a toll it took on them to do something like that. And just the yearning for a moment of peace where their lives were not just something that is there to fulfill a prophecy, but something that is their own. And I, I thought it was very interesting that the author explored the Draupadi Karna angle a little bit more. So I would definitely, definitely say it's worth all the hype and so much more. Okay, what do we have next in line? We have The Miniaturist by Jesse Burton. And once again, we have this eyesore of a sticker. On an autumn day in 1686, 18-year-old Nella Uthman arrives at a grand house in Amsterdam to begin her new life as the wife of wealthy merchant Johan Brandt. I hope I'm pronouncing these names right. Though curiously distant, he presents her with an extraordinary wedding gift, a cabinet-sized replica of their home. I don't know what to say. Um, I, I read this after reading Mexican Gothic, so I think that kind of spoiled it for me because it has a lot of the elements of Mexican Gothic, same spooky house, this miniature house within the house. It seems to be because each of the characters in the house are depicted in this miniature house. And what happens is it starts to mirror. All the dolls in the mini house start to mimic what's going on in the real world. Or the question is, is it happening the other way around? That the real world is being influenced by these dolls. Of course, the Gothic trope, right, was common between both of these, but I feel like Mexican Gothic really explored it in its full potential, whereas the miniaturist was dancing around it in a certain way and kept it to the suggestion of something that's going on rather than actually delving into it. It didn't leave me with much to go on, so... Mm. Next up, we have Cersei. Guess what? There's another sticker. Cersei tells the story of Cersei through Cersei's perspective. Okay, so according to Greek mythology, she is a sorceress. She is known for luring men onto an island where she drugs them and then turns them into pigs. So kind of sadistic, also a bit irrational. But not with Madeline Miller's version because she explores Cersei as a complex and layered character. She first asks the question, why? What would drive someone to turn men into pigs seemingly on a whim? It takes a lot of work and research to tell a convincing retelling of such a well-known story or well-known character. So I have so much admiration for people who can do this. So it has to be believable. Um, which this definitely is. So I think we'll stop here for today because there is more. So stick around for part two and we'll be reviewing the rest of the books which include um, Red, White and Royal Blue, The Once and Future Witches, we've got The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo and of course it ends with us. So that's it. This is the video. Make sure you hit subscribe and do all the things. Follow me on Instagram as well and check out my website which has a lot of really fun articles every week, quick things for you to read. But yeah, that's it. I'll see you next time.